Welcome back to Jurassic World Revealed, presented by Big W. Today's Hammond Collection toy needs no introduction. Celebrating 30 years of what started it all, John Hammond's largest dinosaur and the species first seen by the guests at Jurassic Park, it's the Brachiosaurus. To take us behind the scenes of designing this majestic and massive toy is Mattel's Gregory Murphy. Plus, the legendary nine-time Academy Award winner Dennis Murin has joined us to bring us behind the scenes of designing this dinosaur for the original movie. I'll let him take it from here. We just knew that for the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park, we had to do something that was really big and really special. And of course, there's no bigger and more special dinosaur than the first dinosaur you meet in Jurassic Park. So this is the Hammond Collection Brachiosaurus. This is the biggest Hammond Collection figure we've ever done and it's the most awesome recreation of that Jurassic Park 1 Brachiosaurus ever created. The Hammond Collection Brachiosaurus has 18 points of discrete articulation, as well as three pivot points in the neck for lifelike movement. We really wanted to make sure that it could recreate that iconic pose from the opening of Jurassic Park where it rears up and it reaches those tall branches on its hind legs. And this, of course, presents a bit of a problem when you have a giant scale figure like this. A lot of time and energy went into making sure that those leg joints would hold the weight of the dinosaur, as well as getting the tail length and angle of rotation just right so that the dinosaur can rear up just like in the film. We went with a soft, real feel plastic neck instead of a segmented neck to preserve that screen accurate look and give collectors something that would display perfectly on their shelves. Inside the neck, there are three separate modules with ball joint articulation. At first, these had a little bit of a long stem on the joint, but this was creating a pinching effect with the neck, which didn't look very natural. So we went back and we re-engineered these to be more solid blocks, almost like vertebra providing structure and also allowing a range of motion under the soft plastic. We went to a local uh, animal park and looked at you know, the rhinos, the hippos, giraffes. You know, there's a lot of giraffe in that. Anything you could think of to, to look and see how the light reflected off of it, what the texture was like on it, so that when you saw it in the film, you felt you could reach out and touch it. And we really wanted to, you know, to do A-level work, you know, that really hopefully had not been done before, nobody had ever seen before. The leap to CG put a lot more stuff in our control and to the point I could look at a, a rough version of the lighting and the form of the body of the Brachiosaurus looked kind of flat, which represented the lighting when we were actually in Hawaii shooting it. I had a model I held up there. So when we got into the computer graphic dinosaur, I cheated the light back. So the light wrapped around with the top, but the bottom belly was dark. So now it had depth, you know, and you can feel the mass of the character. I love that scene, that, that image is so romanticized and just, in, in, it evokes what must be going on out there that you can't see, that you just want to see. But how many movies relish the idea of discovering beauty and nature and, you know, the past to scale, you know, things you've never seen before. I'm really surprised and, and I'm very honored that the work seems to hold up after 30 years, you know. We put a lot of time into that. And then the performances of them, I mean, they're aggressive when you want them to be aggressive and they're wonderfully passive and reminding you of sort of your pet dog or whatever it is at other times. There's a lot of connection. You know, you're not just looking, you're feeling stuff as an audience member. And a lot of films don't put those into the movie. Steven is such an expert filmmaker. You know, he just really kept the whole thing, uh, you know, in tone to your heart, either your heart or your muscles to run away. One of those two are always working. We went back to the original on-screen model from ILM to capture as much fine detail in the skin and the musculature as possible. And for the all-new head sculpt, we went back to the Stan Winston animatronic, which is so lifelike and so convincing, and we wanted to capture that same essence in this figure, including all of that fine detail and the glass eyes to really bring it to life. In the film, this dinosaur has a surprisingly complex color scheme with a lot of subtle hues and shifts and textures. We wanted to recreate that as accurately as possible. And so we used a variety of deco techniques, including wipe deco to really pop out all of the skin texture details and spray applications for more natural fades across different parts of the dinosaur. This was kind of a holy grail item for us. It was a dinosaur we never thought we'd actually get to do in the Hammond collection, but the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park provided the perfect opportunity for us to get the go ahead and actually make this figure happen. And we were so excited about how it turned out. Grow your Hammond collection with this impressive Jurassic Park sauropod by pre-ordering now, only at Big W. <laughs>